they are all good Canadian and Norwegian friends. The story we during these uh, three days together here at uh, the Municipal of Oos has got a detailed insight in is not a very well-known story here in Norway. I must admit that I had not heard of this story before in the spring this year and I consider myself uh, to be a person a bit more than average interested in Norwegian occupation history. The Wellington story is a story that very easily could have developed into a huge tragedy for many people. It did not. Why is it so? Well, I believe it has to do with the nature of the story and the time it occurred. The nature of a clandestine operation, which I consider this story to be, is that everybody involved keep their mouth shut and since it went quite slick, the occup occupant did not find out anything and it ended well for all involved. Another thing is that the peace broke loose in Europe only seven months later. Since no tragedies followed in the wake of the story, nobody uh, really cared. End of story, thank God, no. I hope that the arrangements we all are a part of these days significantly will contribute to bring the memories of those women and men who secured the happy ending up where it belonged. Was it luck? Well, luck comes to those who dare. I say no more. Uh, one thing I would like to say. I don't think it was a pure luck. For those Norwegians who discovered and colonized Canada some 500 years before Columbus. <laughs> uh, so uh, be aware, some of you uh, Canadians could uh, actually be uh, ancient Norwegians. <laughs> Uh, 1944 is uh, also a milestone year in the Norwegian aviation history. Uh, the Norwegian Air Force was founded that year. Before that, we had a naval air force here in this uh, country. Uh, however, um, how that started, started is uh, also a fascinating uh, story. In 1912, only seven years after Norway's union with Sweden ended, a Swede announced that he intended to fly over the then main naval base in Norway, my base if it had been today, and bombard it with oranges. <laughs> A bunch of uh, Norwegian submarine, submarine naval officer uh, was of course not willing to accept that. So uh, after a heavy dinner at the local officers club, they found out that uh, flying could not be that difficult. <laughs> At least uh, not more difficult than driving a submarine. After all, uh, both uh, things were moving in three dimensions. Yeah. And an aviator could even look out into the air. Beneath the waves you could not see anything at all. I don't know, I was not of uh, pretty obvious reasons not present, but I can imagine that the decision to fly, to fly over a neighbor base before the Swede was taken after a drink or two or three or four or more. <laughs> uh, to make a long uh, story short, the executive officer of the submarine, who had no uh, family, was uh, told uh, to go to Germany to learn to fly. He came back to Norway with six flight hours in his backpack and beat the Swede with two days. And that was the birth of Norwegian military aviation. Uh, here in this uh, country, we uh, still like to beat uh, Sweden, especially in football, which, uh, which don't uh, happen very often. We never beat them in hockey, so to you Canadians, uh, please help us with that. Uh, the relation between uh, Norway and Canada, Canada is uh, quite significant. I mentioned Little Canada, where we are uh, going uh, tomorrow, Little Norway, the Norwegian pilot training camp in uh, Canada. And those, and those of you who has relations uh, to Nova Scotia 
uh, have perhaps heard of a small fishing municipal not far from Halifax called Lunenburg. Uh, in Lunenburg there is an area called uh, Camp Norway. This is where the gunnery training school for the Norwegian Navy was situated during the Second World War. Uh, now, at uh, the end, I would like to propose a toast for those uh, people who managed to make a success out of the joint, combined and clandestine operation here at the uh, OAS in 1944. They must not be forgotten. Forgotten. Score. Thank you.